So this is actually day three of our butchering. It is actually Labor Day today, Monday, and uh, we took us three days. Uh, we did eight on the first day. We did nine yesterday. We got a little faster with it, averaged about 15 minutes per bird. Kind of got into a rhythm, uh, Shauna and I, uh, between who was killing, who was eviscerating and all that. Um, and then we have, we had eight more to finish today. I've been primarily doing them today by myself because um, it's a school day for our girls. Um, that's how it is with homeschool, right? You, you all know what I'm talking about. Um, but I'm on my last bird. Uh, she has been uh, killed there. And I thought I would just make a little video walking you through um, where I am at the end of this first process. So you saw us do our first bird. Um, you saw us kind of do a little bit uh, with the others, kind of time lapse there. And then this is what we've got with the last one. So the way that I've been doing this by myself is I would have one bleeding out um, while, well, let me, I would bleed one out. I would um, scald it, pluck it, and then bring her over here to our little pot here, which we had some cool water, a little bit of ice in, to stop the cooking process. While the bird was in there, I would go get the next bird, kill it, let it bleed out while um, I eviscerated that bird. Obviously, we're not at that because um, this is the last bird, so. Um, not gonna do a whole lot of talking, interacting on this. Well, I, maybe I will. I'll, I'll kind of walk you through what I'm doing just because, um, some tips we found and maybe we'll go in, we'll, we'll probably do a, a whole tip thing, um, afterwards, but while I'm thinking about it, do not go too hot on the temperature. Um, I know you've seen this in other videos. Uh, the bird literally starts to cook and even if you hold it in there for 10 or 15 seconds at too hot a temperature, uh, anything above the uh, 160, it's going to start to cook pretty rapidly. And we've had that where a couple chickens, we, we really started to cook it and it started falling apart in the plucker uh, because it was being cooked and it was wind, the meat was wanting to fall away from the bone quite literally. So um, that's tip. And we'll probably cover that at the end when we talk about all the lessons we've learned from this. So anyway, I'm gonna go get my, my heat glove, get the bird, and we'll start this last process for you all to see, okay? So as far as the timing goes on this, again, 10 or 15 seconds, you start to kind of get a feel for it. Um, you do it a little longer if the, if the temperature is a little cooler. Uh, this one's on the low end now, but um, Still don't want to do it too long because again, you don't want to start that cooking process. Something I've learned is um, don't get too picky with how many feathers come off during the deplucker. Um, sometimes they all come off real quick, real easy. Uh, other times you, you just have to pick some off. And you know what? It's not the end of the world uh, when that happens. You just, you kind of roll with it. And uh, yeah, you roll with it. All right. So. Come on over here, put her in the water. And now we had some ice in that earlier, but it's still cool enough. Again, that's just to stop the cooking process. It's not really to get it cold per se. What we've been doing is uh, using just regular garden shears. They've been okay. Um, they do, they get the job done. Um, we're gonna probably next time, see if we can find some actual uh, poultry shears to, to maybe help speed the process along. 
Um, but honestly, these aren't too bad. Um, they'll probably lose their, their uh, sharpness pretty quickly if we keep doing it using this way. But they're relatively cheap enough too. If you get a new pair each time, it's not the end of the world. Um, again, nothing new here, you guys. Just bend that leg back right at the joint, cut in between the bone, not through the bone. Easy peasy. Now what we've been doing, it's a little different than you might've seen before. So like on Justin Rhodes and stuff, he'll have you cut off this oil gland here. Well, we want the whole tail gone. Um, that's Shauna's preference. So again, we just use the shears and we just go pull that tail and just kind of snip right around it. Comes off pretty simple. And we discard that because it's got the oil gland and it's got a lot of fatty tissue. That's totally your preference, all right? That's the, the way Shauna prefers it. And since I eat her cooking, that's the way I prefer it. Um, but you guys can do whatever you want, okay? So now this bird's ready. Uh, I go over to this other table to prepare the neck, so let me move the bird. Now what I've been doing is I've been cutting the neck open here, okay? And pulling the skin around it, around the neck and off like this. That pulls the esophagus and the windpipe away. Is esophagus and windpipe the same thing? No, esophagus is the throat, is the food throat. Anyway, pulls that away. And then what, I, what I've been doing, and this is again, preference. I've been going ahead and I cut it all here. Okay, sometimes that's not a good thing because sometimes it cuts open the crop and you start to get pebbles and stuff open like that. It also can make the getting the windpipe out a little more challenging, but I haven't had any problems with it. So it's made, doing that has made other parts of it easier for me. So that's what I've gotten used to doing. Okay, so then you go back to this keel bone, right underneath it, slice open. Okay, so this one's got a lot, not, a lot of nice fat. You see all this yellow, that's all fat. Okay, that's all connective tissue in there. And you make that opening, okay? And then this is the fun part. And this is the part that Shauna found, uh, was, she was a little bit more squeamish about than she thought she would be. But she's gotten, she's gotten over it for the most part. Um, but here's where you just stick your hand in and you start breaking up all that connective tissue. I kind of compare it to if you've ever carved a, a jack-o'-lantern and you don't have a spoon. Sometimes you get in there with your hand and you're scraping the the sides of the the insides of the pumpkin and trying to get all the meat of the pumpkin out. That's kind of what this is similar to. Okay? So then you just start to pull stuff on out. Okay? Things <laughs> And as Justin Rose says, you use gravity. Gravity's your friend. And you just, you grab everything you can and you pull nice and hard. There's the, the crop and the esophagus comes on out. And you should get it to a point where most of the guts and everything are hanging out like this. Got a lot of fatty tissue here. And I've still got some lungs in there to scrape. So you get in there with your fingers. Again, there's supposedly a tool that is used for this. Your fingers do work just as well. We've made do with our fingers just fine. And you really, you really gotta scrape against the the, uh, the rib cage there, the, the back spine to get the all the lungs and everything out. So these are the lungs, you can see they're a lighter pink. They have a lot of, you, a lot of um, vascular tissue and stuff, obviously, because that's where air is exchanging oxygen in the blood and you just kind of scrape that out until you feel like you've got most of the tissue you'll you'll feel it when you when you're as you're scraping your finger along you're feeling more bone than tissue as long as you're in there you can kind of grab try and grab the rest of the windpipe if there's enough in there and pull that out like so Okay, so my, mine's real short because I cut off the bulk of it when I cut the next stuff off. So 
Now, here's another personal preference thing, okay? All of this fat and everything around the, the anus, which is right there, okay? You wanna cut around that. Different people have different preferences on how much of that fat you wanna try and keep. We don't wanna keep any of it because that's just, that's how our diet, that's how our goals are. It's up, totally up to you, but you cut on both sides and down and around and it just, oh, got a little bit connected still here. There. And it just kind of comes off like that, okay? Now, I'm gonna set that aside for a second. I'm gonna harvest the heart and the livers for our dogs. Well, the heart just kind of came off like that. There's the heart. You can see what it looks like. Okay, got a little bucket over there for the hearts. Here's the livers, okay? Now, really important, here's the bile sac. Do not nick that if you possibly can because it's a really nasty shade of green and it's poison and you really gotta rinse stuff off very carefully. So I sacrifice a little bit of liver in order to avoid that. I've punctured it a couple times doing, doing this, um, but I would rather leave more liver on there than puncture it and have to deal with it. The rest of this just goes in the scrap bucket. When we get pigs, they will be for the pigs. We don't have pigs, and unfortunately we don't have anybody nearby that has pigs that we give them to, so we are doing what we can with them, which we don't have a compost pile really deep enough to compost them. So we give it back to nature. A oh, little bit of lungs still there. Uh, so I just basically take it out to the perimeter of our property and dump it for animals. And somebody's coming and picking it up because uh, the first batch that I sent out there on Saturday, when I went to go dump the batch from yesterday, dumped it in the same spot and it was totally gone. So there that is. Now we're just rinsing. Hey, sweetheart, can you go turn the camera so it's facing? Just, that's good, very good. Good job. Okay, so here's the neck still. Now with this, I found, and again, personal preference, I like to hold it up like this on its back and cut downwards like this. Again, we're not worried about saving much of this skin shauna likes to cook without the skin for a lot of stuff so that keeps it down neck goes in the scrap and then we just finish rinsing her off Oops. sorry sweetheart and then give a few more of these little feathers that hung on here. And you know, when, when you take this out of the deep freeze, you can finish plucking them then too. I mean, it's not the end of the world if you miss a few or if you have to do a few later on. So, okay. So you want to open up the lid for the blue bin and nice fresh chicken carcass goes in the water bath water ice bath with the rest of them and we're gonna let them sit we're gonna probably add a little bit more ice we'll let them sit in there for uh, an hour or two let them get nice and chill and then we'll bag okay we'll so uh, it's been a few hours the birds have been chilling uh, in the tub with the ice water, uh, nice and cold. Had a chance to relax, rigors set, uh, come, and it's on its way out. It should be anyway. Um, got a couple birds out that I just pulled out uh, to drip dry a little bit before we put them in our shrink bags. So I'm just gonna go over this um, real quick with you once. Uh, saw it already earlier in the video in a little bit, but this hopefully will give you a bit more idea of what we're doing, how we're doing it. Um, these bags uh, that we got, ordered them online, uh, I don't even, off of Amazon. Um, they come with a little tube, stick the tube in the cavity, you don't push, 
walk through it, but um, you zip tie it as tight as you can, dunk it in the hot water, around 200 degrees, give or take. Uh, it says 180 to 195. I found about 200 is actually really good for these bags to really have them shrink up nice and good for you. All the air comes out the tube, you pull them out, pull the tube out, cinch up the zip tie, put them in the cooler with the ice until you weigh them, label them, throw them in the freezer. So um, let's, let's go, let's do one. Okay. Now, I've seen different different blogs about the, um, how dry these need to be before they go in the bag. Some people say pat them dry, others say let them drip dry. We're trying just drip dry, honestly. Um, I think the big thing is you don't want to have a lot of water in there for a lot of ice crystals to form in the freezing process that'll damage and bruise the skin. I think that's the theory behind it. Now, I've had some people say, <coughs> there's a Joe Salton video about tucking the, the legs under using the skin. Since we cut most of, a lot of the skin away, we don't have the ability to do that. I found that just crunching them or, or kind of cinching them together. So this tube here goes into the body cavity and you just kind of bunch it together as tight as you can. Keep it, as, keep it all together as much as you can. Twist it nice and good, nice and tight around that tube. Take a zip tie. And you cinch it down around the bag, around that tube, nice and twisted together so it's not gonna move. Like that, you take your uh, your heat resistant glove, and we come on over to the scalder, which has been warming up. Right here. And we're just right about 200 degrees, so I'm gonna go ahead and put it in. You wanna make sure you put it in all the way so the whole bag is in the water. Okay, you only need to be in there for a couple seconds. Keep the tube above so that it has air escape. Pull it out, you see how nice and tight it's already shrunk down. Now we're just gonna come on over here to another workspace, set it down, leave the glove on to hold here, pull the tube on out. Depending on how asbestos-like your hands are, you can just do this now with your fingers. Just cinch up that zip tie. To, for the tiny little space that the tube is occupying. It's now nice and tight around. Comes on over here. Bag of ice in here with here. And it's ready to chill until we're ready to weigh it, label it, put it in the freezer, uh, which we'll all do within the next half hour. So that will keep it cool enough. And that's it. So now we're gonna skip ahead to uh, some tips and lessons learned that uh, Sean and I had from this round of chicken making. Okay, so we are done butchering our chickens for the first time. Uh, the first 25 that we've ever attempted. We're actually doing this part a couple days later just because life happens and we got too busy. Yeah. So <laughs> we're recalling our experience and we, we just had a few thoughts that we thought we would share with you. Um, about our experience that maybe you didn't see on the video um, itself and hopefully it'll help us to remember and maybe help okay. you guys uh, when and if you attempt um, to grow your own meat. So what, I'll let, I'll let you go first. What was the... Well, as a visual learner, it would have, I thought, so as a visual learner, I thought that just watching the videos would be enough. Um, I think if we had been able to go and have somebody show us, yeah, that would have been ideal. Instead, we just did it from YouTube videos and watching. So we knew what we were doing, but there wasn't somebody that we could talk to or ask or be like, "Hey, are we forgetting something?" There's, there's just, there's always a difference between seeing it on a TV monitor or yes. your phone and holding it in your hand for the first time or being and right in front of it. I ended up being more squeamish than I anticipated. Like, right. I thought I was gonna be okay. And in watching the videos, having the chicken and the plucker really bothered me like that. I hated that part of the videos. 
Um, in real life, it didn't bother me that much. I don't know why. Um, but I had a really hard time sticking my hand in a warm dead chicken. Um, I just, I don't know. It's, a, it's an experience. It's one that it, that I thought I was, you... it wouldn't have bothered me, but <laughs> it, it did like, it took me, it wasn't until like our fifth chicken, I think that I finally went ahead and did it. Right. Um, and then. Well, and then all the questions of, am I doing it right? Am I screwing it up? Am I... Am I are we getting everything out? Are we getting everything out and everything like that? <laughs> like, because the lungs, you really have yeah, to, like, dig. You do. You, the lungs are, are... I can see why there's a special tool for it, but yeah. I can also see why I wouldn't bother with a special tool, because it just... Yeah. I, I, I think I mentioned in the video, I liken it to scraping the, the meat out of a pumpkin, mm. you know? And yeah, sometimes you can use a spoon... Sometimes you just got to get in there with your fingers and just get the yeah. get the um, nasty stringy parts. But off. really, once the feathers are off, it looks like it almost looks like a chicken you buy from the store. Once you cut the head off and the feet off, then it really starts to look like a chicken, right? right? Like a whole chicken from the store. Um, the other thing, what I need to learn now is how to cut up a chicken. That's a skill that I never learned. I mean. I mean, I lived in Asia and I would go down the street to the market and ask for a boneless, skinless chicken breast. And I'd wait about 20 minutes while the lady got the chicken, killed the chicken, plucked it, gutted it, and deboned it and handed me my boneless, skinless chicken breast. Um, so well, I have appreciation to, for that now, too. I have a huge appreciation <laughs> for that. Like, huge. So I can deskin it, no problem. But it's just... I have to learn how to debone it and then cutting up the chicken. So that's the next big homestead skill that I will be learning. So here's a couple of things that, that we learned um, as part of this process. And I'll, I'll kind of try to go from like setup to end in the way that I do. So number one is we're really glad that we bought um, a game table, a, a hunting game table that the has a sink, a, that has a sink and, a and a faucet specifically designed to hook your hose up to and it has a drain you can either hook a drain hose to or just down to a five gallon bucket it was like 65 dollars at atwood's worth yeah. every penny and, and and it is it's you know it's plastic it's not stainless steel but i doesn't matter someday i would like stainless steel um, but we still are able to disinfect, disinfect it. it and it just was really nice having that really easily controllable water to be able to rinse things off with um but on that note something we found is make sure you have enough hoses and connections because um between that table and then the plucker so the plucker we didn't use this feature but the plucker has its own hose connection so it has a built-in water ring on there you plug in the hose turn on the water and it automatically sprays so you don't have to sit there and, and we used it the first time we used it the and first it worked time well yeah. But we needed that hose then because we had another table that we wanted to wash down in between. So we really needed three hoses. Yeah. We, we yeah, we two. found we found that we wanted that extra <clears throat> that extra um, hose, that extra ability to spray stuff down. Now what we didn't have with the game table was the sprayer right. attachment. Um, just because I couldn't find the right fittings to make that adap adapter this time around. And I don't think we really missed it. No, I don't think so. But I could see it, it could be useful useful so. in the future just to, as you're holding the chicken rather than trying to manipulate it underneath the faucet, if you just hold it and you sh spray yep. it down, it'd be easy. It'd be pretty easy to do. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, have make sure you have enough hoses for all the different sources of water that you're gonna want to supply. But if you can get that table, I think that's a big help. If you're doing if you're doing it outside. If you're doing outside. Which, another thing is if you're doing it outside, I highly recommend shade. We did not have a tent. We had trees that shaded part of it. Later in the day. Later in the day. Um, I mean, it was still 80s, low 90s. Yeah. High humidity. We are in the south. Um, some of that could have been avoided if we had gone earlier in the day. Yeah. But two of the days we didn't start till two because life. Um, and we're not early morning people. Typically, that's yeah. just us so um so either go, getting started early in the morning or making sure you have shade so next time since we already have most of the big expenses outlaid we'll be able to get a tent for next time right 
And that was the other thing is we chose, well, we didn't choose Labor Day weekend. We were fortunate that the butcher up. time lined up to Labor Day weekend where we had the three days to spread that out. So we didn't feel the rush. Mm -hmm. We knew we could take a break and stop, you know, and we ended up spending like about 10 bucks more in the ice yeah. to, to spread out the two days. We didn't, And that was worth it. Perhaps. And that was worth it. Yeah. So, um, but I would highly recommend the shake. Definitely. Definitely. And in your first time, and I think I've said this many times in the video already, but take your time. Plan, um, if, if, especially if you're doing a large number of birds your first time. And of course, large number is relative terminology. Oh, okay. We consider 25 birds a large number of birds. I have a friend um, who I was with in Asia. Her and her husband recently just did 50 birds. That to me is like a lot, but they, that's what they did. And that worked for them. Right. Okay, I have to go through tomatoes. I'll be, I'll be right back. So while she's doing that, um, I'll move on to um, the killing cone, okay? <laughs> um, make sure, if you, when you get your killing cone, really secure it to the wall or post or wherever you're doing the, the, the actual killing part, um, if that's how you go with it. Um, number of times, one side of it, because uh, the, the chicken was flopping around and the side came off and it tilted, and a couple times the bird actually flopped completely yeah. out and there was that was just a, a mess that I mean, was no fun we had a bird flying across the grass yeah it, it really wasn't flying but yeah it, it trying to catch it it's just it's not the way you want your it's not the way you want to do it it's not the way we want to do it we want it to be we as humane and you know painless and quick as possible and the least amount of movement um so all that goes to say is make sure that when you're doing it you're gonna to wanna to stand there and hold the feet for you know a, at least the first minute or two while it's bleeding out, uh, cause it's gonna twitch and, and flop and it can flop out of there. And I would just recommend just taking the time, take a breather and um, let the process happen. Then you can leave it if you wanna you know move on to something else and wanna let it drain for an additional two or three minutes, that's fine. But be there for the first minute or so to really get that uh, that initial flop and fill and out of the way. We did find that leaving them that additional time was yeah was nice. Yeah, that's a part you though. can't cheat on. You can't cheat on the bleeding out part because no. it just it. There was one time when we we really kind of rushed it and it was fine. We were able to process the bird. It just it makes everything else messier. I see. And you just don't want to yep. deal with that. And you know what else? I just thought this. Um, the not feeding them. Definitely, like, for the at yeah. least 12 hours beforehand. Because that first day, I think we had done closer to 24 hours without them getting It was closer, food. guys. And there was very little poop. Um, and their gullet, like, there was nothing in the... There was nothing in the gizzard, nothing in the... In the gizzard and the... In the, in, in the Crop. Crop. Yeah, it was very clean process, those first eight birds that we did. Yeah. Then... And the last day, or even the middle, the second day, we had given them some food, not a ton, but we didn't want to starve them. Yeah. So we um, gave them a little food And there overnight. was more. And it was still 12 hours? Yeah. And so there, was, so there wasn't a lot, but there was still some in both the crop and in the digestive tract. And it's just... I mean, something you got to watch out for it, you rinse it but... off and you, and you move on but um but leaving that time denying them food for that that 12 to 24 hours i think is is mm -hmm. really key so, i mean if you have moved them and they have fresh grass and bugs then they're not gonna yeah they should still be totally fine. starving they'll still be able to get something yeah um kind of already talked about the plucker uh this the scalding temp we found and I, I i'm pretty sure i addressed this in the video too um really favor the higher end the the scalding temp that i that we saw was between 140 160 degrees favor the higher end but do not go over um do not creep up to that 170 180 degree range or any higher than that because you, you doesn't matter you, you it doesn't matter how quickly you dunk it you will cook the bird um, and it will start to fall apart in the plucker, uh, and it just, 
ask us how we know. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it just, it, we, we had two birds that ended up uh, that way. Yeah. Now, we think we saved it, you know, you know, we went ahead and finished processing because we got it cleaned out and we got it on ice and we'll just yeah. cook, cook it to death whenever we do, you know, to avoid any um, possible contamination there. But that's just something you, you want to avoid is just watch that scalding temp. Um, but, and, and use dish soap. Yeah, that was it. Add that, some dish soap. To add that some dish one. soap. That definitely helps. Um, and other than that, the plucker is great. You know, if, if you're going to process, you know, I would say even if you're just going to process 25 birds once a year, the plucker is probably worth, worth it. it. Oh, I would um, think, cause I mean, sometimes we still did pluck, like have to do some by hand and yeah, like not the full feathers, but cause the scalding wasn't, wasn't great or, or yeah. whatever on that one. And so it's a learning curve and you learn as you go and it gets easier the more you do it. Yeah. So we're going to be getting 25 more birds and doing it again. Yep. So even though it was an experience, it wasn't a bad one. No. No, it was a it was a great learning experience, and um, again, it's that having that new profound respect for the people who live like this all the time, even today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and but also knowing that those are our birds in our freezer, and we know exactly from you know hatching to consumption everything that they've done and been yeah. exposed to. And and that knowledge and that peace of mind is is awesome. And yeah, knowing that they're they had a a good life and that they're also just good for us. There's not all sorts of nasty antibiotics or chemicals or things like that right. in it, in it. And it's in our freezer right now. Mm -hmm. And that you know, so prices will probably continue to go up. And you know, we're eventually going to run out of those chickens, which is why we're going to get, get more. more. Um, oh, and I wasn't sure that we'd be able to fit all the chickens in our freezer, but we did. So, yay. Yeah. That's cool. Plenty of I mean, we still have, I still have vegetables and we still have some Other things pork in there. there. Yeah. But it was a, so did we talk numbers? Do we tell them? I don't know if we talk I numbers. Think, I, don't I don't think, think we, we have yet. So I'm just doing this off of memory. So we had the, the heaviest bird was five pounds 12 ounces yeah the lightest bird i think was three pounds 12 ounces or three pounds 11 ounces i think it was three pounds 11 ounces yeah um the average weight was about four pounds three ounces was the average of all three or seven we can go with four three that's fine somewhere in there it between, was four between four three and four seven um but we had five birds that were over five pounds. No, seven birds over five pounds. five pounds. Three that were under four. The vast majority were somewhere in that, in that four, four pound, pound range. range. And, you know, that's pretty awesome. Now, we don't have any idea our total cost. And we kind of purposely did, did, did not track it this time because so much of this was infrastructure. It was getting the plucker. It was building the coop it, or the chicken tractor. It was, it was doing all that stuff that... That wasn't going to give us. Th those are costs that are going to be diffused over the li our life yeah, of doing this. Yeah, as we do this, um, so I mean, we didn't track the cost of feed. Right. But so with the next ones, we'll we will do we'll that. Do with that. the next batch, we'll we'll track everything from ordering them through how much feed, and then. And honestly, even if we're not saving money, which we very well might not be, we're not doing it to save money. Right. Um, we're doing it for the quality control that we can provide um, and just so we don't have to rely on the food grid. Um, I don't trust it. Even now, I mean, I have... <laughs> I'm looking at a bunch of bananas behind the camera that I'm going to like be freezing, so we have them. Um, you know, prepping or having this food in your freezer, in your pantries, wherever. You know, you don't have to go to the grocery store. You just shop your pantry, you know, shop what you have if you buy in bulk. And, you know, so he, we're looking at two weeks without a paycheck because he's changing jobs. Yep. Um, I'm not worried about how I'm going to feed my family. I have enough food for two weeks. We are going to be fine. I don't, 
now. I mean, we snacks could, might go down I mean, or certain ones. Think about this. We could eat a whole chicken every day between now and the time I start my new job. And yeah. And be okay. I mean, we'd be sick of chicken. But we'd be fed. But we'd be fed. And I don't know <laughs> that we could even eat a whole chicken. Well, I guess we did it for all the meals, but yeah. um but yeah. yeah. So we have it it we have food. And we um, have and now we have a skill set. Now yeah. we have an experience that you know, as long as supply chains are stable enough to keep ordering the bird, you know, relying on a hatchery and stuff, we'll, we'll probably keep going that route. But eventually we do want to look into look, other breeds. We want to try some that we can hatch out ourselves right. just for that more of that self-sustain sustainability aspect. Because I, I don't want to rely on hatcheries either. Right. Um, it's, it's all about equipping ourselves with both the skills and the resources so that when and if and in my mind it's more of a win we have to pivot to to being you know completely sustainable then we have the ability to do that we may not have every single aspect of it plugged in at that point but we now know how to raise chickens we know how to raise them and process them from start to and finish. you know say we don't have electricity we could still do it we can pluck by hand yeah um the plucker just makes it easier yeah. um getting but, a getting a, a secure water source on our own property is a goal that we're gonna have at some point yep. you know the county water that we have is great and we're thankful, thankful for, for it, it but we're gonna get a pump we're gonna get a well on our land so that we have that independent source of water just like we're getting our solar systems to have an independent source of power. Is it going to be all the power we need or would like? No. But it's going to do like 80 to 90% and we can figure out the rest. Yep. So. I, hope, I think that's it. Yeah. I hope everyone, I hope you enjoyed our adventure on this part of it. Um, Please, you can, I hope you laughed. Cause yeah. Because it was, yes. Again, we're learning and we want you to laugh at us and, and with, with us because yeah you know, this yeah. is completely new to us and it also makes me happy that when we get pigs we are going to outsource that processing at least in the beginning i'm not ready to process a pig oh yeah no the moving on to other processing other animals i mean then that's another nice thing is that chicken's a really great one to start with if you're if you're looking if you're processing animals for the first time if you don't have any hunting experience or if you've never um, done any of that then a chicken's a really nice one to start with especially the Cornish cross because they're so they're, they're bred so adapted for this purpose it makes yep. learning it very easy. So easy but again it's we're gonna ha be able to have that knowledge so that let's say we move on and we try a rabbit next not not necessarily going to but eventually we want to try it so we have the skill set well, we now have an experience with slaughtering an animal, de, you know, defeathering or deferring it, skinning it, you know, yep. going through that process. So, and as you do it more, you know, you can adapt it more. You can take the things that are similar and say, oh, I'm doing essentially the same thing here that I was doing over here. It's just a little different. And I think it will always be hard, but I think it should be hard. Like that aspect that you're taking a life. Right. Um, that should never be easy. No, it should. It shouldn't be easy. It shouldn't be something you throw away. It, it's it's something that you should take um, very seriously and very con you know um, conscientiously yeah. to you know to realize I'm I am taking this life to sustain mine. But that's also biblically sound that we are to do that and we're to be good stewards. And that's what's driving us with this, too, is yes. to be yeah. biblically sound in, in how we're living our lives. So. Yeah. Okay. So with that, we'll wrap this video up. Um, more to come, more to follow as we kind of get back on the on the horse of, of growing our infrastructure. Yeah, there's a lot of infrastructure growth that will be coming yeah. with expanding the garden. I'm going to be cutting down uh, about trees? six trees to make way for our solar system to get installed hopefully in the next two, three months. 
and then I've got some drainage projects to do and none of it is super fun or sexy or one of those that you're like oh look but they're all necessary they're all necessary and, and, and there's gonna be learning experiences With throughout too. the whole thing so hopefully uh, you'll enjoy the ride as we bring it to you and with that we will say God be with you all and all you do and keep the faith and keep up the fight.